Okay. Yep. It's just the monitor to make sure I'm coming audio through and haven't gone muted. Test, test, test. All right. As everybody starts streaming in. Blue Wave Bench fires up. Want to welcome everybody to game three here this evening. It's finally underway after some rain delays. I'm your host, John Rymers with SPBC TV. I'm glad you've tuned in. This is going to be an absolutely awesome game this evening. Crowd filing in. Looking forward to it. Wind blowing in from the left bow pole. Clear skies finally breaking for this Easter long weekend. And it looks like this evening Surfers is the away team. Boys are just getting their last debrief as the Redland Rays also getting their last debrief from their coaches on the sideline. Type in chat and let us know you're watching, where you're watching from. Owen Drinkwater will be joining me shortly. He's on his way all the way from King Roy just to get on the mic tonight and uh, do his expert play-by-play -play calling and uh, in the meantime I've got a few other co-commentators ready and willing in the wings just grab some uh, all clubs data as it comes available uh, with me this evening will be Daniel Grant how you going mate good thank you for having me biggest night of the year Oh, this is going to be massive. Winner takes all. This is the games that you play baseball for, so. Absolutely. I cannot sit still right now. I've had anticipation, butterflies. I think I've had, I've been sick about four times. I've just been waiting for this game. I think I'd be less nervous if I was actually playing. Yeah, well, I reckon too. <laughs> but no, it's two quality teams. Everyone's got their best nine out there. Surfers are missing Max Darrington out in centre tonight. But besides that, all teams full strength, full pitching lineups ready to go. As we start off with Justin Erasmus on the mound for Redlands and Andy Cosgrove leading off for Surfers Paradise. And he swings on the first pitch, going back to the wall, right it's field. This ball is out of here! 
first pitch bomb. That is a statement from Andy Cosgrove. Goes yard on the first pitch he sees. It's not the first time this season Andy's done that. But I'm sure it won't be the last. Well, he got the pitch he wanted. Fast ball, hit a ball. As Ricky takes strike up. But you couldn't script a better start for Surface Paradise. One pitch, one run on the way in the first inning. How do you like that at home? Who else, by the way? Who else but Andy? He's the man. He is the man. So one and two now on Ricky. Hitting in the two hole for Max Durrington. He's doing a good job all season, Ricky. Hitting over 300 on the year on his first season back from college. Very handy to plug in. So one away now. From one Diebel to another. This Diebel with more holes in his pants than the previous Diebel. You wouldn't read about it, but believe it or not, is getting new pants next year. Hot, hot off the press. Unless he has a really good game tonight and they win. In that case, pants are probably staying. The pants are probably staying for a week. Well, public holiday tomorrow, tomorrow, there is no counting what's going to happen. So quickly goes one and two. There you go, I'm Caroline. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, say hi to Jose for me. How you going, Benny? Our French correspondent and uh, also another co-commentator this season. Good to see you, mate. First pitch bomb, absolutely, Dad. Thanks for tuning in. My uh, loyal roadie. And uh, Mike, thanks for tuning in from NZ. And uh, Jai goes down looking on that one, I think. Yes. Appears as though we'll be calling a bit of a low zone tonight. Harrison White plate. Speaking of home runs, very impartial to a home run this season, Harry White. Breakout G season. Due for one. GBL leader, too. Probably his longest stretch in between home runs since the start of the season. Good swing as he fouls it off. How you going, Nico? Good to see you, buddy. Uh, yes, I believe there is a pitch count on Reese that tonight. I think he's at 70. Whether or not it's enforced or not, I don't know. There has been chatter that as we waited an extra two days to get this game play, that the pitching restrictions have been lifted, but as he's not starting, we may not see whether that gets into full effect or not tonight. As he swings on that low ball in the dirt, and that will end the inning. Not before one run gets on the board, care of Andy Cosgrove, first pitch, bomb over the right field fence. 
that does help with the nervous anticipation on the surfers bench. So like I said, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. We're up to 87 odd people tuning in. Thank you very much in this first inning, not, not wanting to miss a pitch. And um, I want to thank Rory Summerford for setting up the uh, radar for this evening to give us all the stats and data that Owen needs to fuel his commentary. I'm sure he'll be here in a, in a few minutes or so. I'm sure he's listening to the live stream in his car on the way here. Drive safe, mate. So bottom of the second, uh, sorry, bottom of the first rather, getting ahead of myself. As we have a quick look at surface, how we line up today. Jerry Lacaro behind the dish, Declan Summerfield on the mound. Got Jai Debo at first, Wes Wilford at second, Atsuki Takahashi. Takahashi. I didn't want to make sure I got that right at shortstop. Andy Cosgrove at third, Ricky Debo in left, Sam Foster plugging in in center field for, I believe, the first his first start in center field for the A grade team tonight this year. Big game to do it. And then right field we've got Harry Watt with Scott Cronin DHing due up second next inning. Sam Foster fresh off a uh, GBL 2 championship. Back to back championship might I add. On uh, Sunday afternoon 10 nil 2 over early. Why you want to win them? If you're going to do it, blow it out, as uh, the Blue Wave would want to do tonight. So here we go. See what answer the Rhythm Rays have for Surfers 1 0 start. So Ryan Duncan leads it off. Hot start for Dex, 86 on the clock. I think he's been chomping at the bit to get on the mound in this series. That one's hit, grounded to third. Andy Cosgrove put out at first for the first out. So good start for the Blue Wave with the one out. Some great defense being played by both teams so far this series. Um, not due to a lack of anticipation. Um, Declan, starting pitcher tonight, actually got here just after four o'clock. So you can tell he's wired and ready to go tonight. As Anthony Gomez steps to the plate, two for four last game played, last Sunday. Starring in the field and in the plate for Redlands. In the corner there. Feeling that one off towards the bullpen on the right. Declan already up to 88 miles, second battering. Very lively arm. One and one.
Sandy has to charge it. Oh, play. But just a lightning throw and on the money for out number two. Had to charge in onto the grass to get that one. Not quite as hard hit as the previous one, but making... Leaving the leather behind too. Bare hand play. Been raining all week. You know that's not an easy play to make. Andy making it look like he's done it before. As Tyson Zamora steps in. Two down, bottom of the first. Swinging over, uh, over that one, bidding by pace a little bit there. Deck looking really hot. Same pitch, same result. As we tick over 100 viewers, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Witnessing an absolutely awesome game here this evening. Rings him up. After swinging at the first two, then a ball is frozen at the plate and watches that one for strike three. That's going to end the inning. We go to the top of the second. Surf is still ahead, one to zero. So back here, top of the second inning. And uh, Daniel, you uh, managed to get a walk around on the field tonight. Let us know uh, how it felt. Yeah, pretty good underfoot considering all the rain we've had in the past few weeks, or past few days. It hasn't stopped raining Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But I don't know if you can see at home, but the field is pretty immaculate. Um, they've done a great job here. As you see, the batting box, no signs of sludge. Beautiful facilities. Uh, Windsor, Windsor are first class. The ground, ground crew here are amazing. This is um, the best uh, looking field that I've ever live streamed at. Bar surfers, of course. Can't beat surfers. Shout out Cooper Thompson, best groundsman in the world. There you go. As Jerry swings through the first pitch. Hits a high drive out to left field. Should be holding up in the breeze for the catch for the first out of the inning. So getting that on the ball early here, the blue wave, as uh, Scotty Cronin comes to the plate, DH this evening. Continuing their way of being aggressive at the plate. Scott swings at the first pitch as well. This season, they've had a lot of his success going after pitches and not waiting to get to two strikes to do their damage. And seeing early fastballs, hitting early fastballs. Scott takes the ball. I think once they get on base, uh, this team is really good at stealing bases. Very quick, very, very quick team. Cronin chases that one down low. Goes one and two now. Oh, 
fouls that one off to the right side. As BG's were saying, just staying alive. How you going, Scotty Porter? The PP Islands. Put a pin in the map. As Cronin holds up on one in the dirt. Two and two. Protect the plate now. Swings past that one. Out number two. Appeared to be a slider on the outside part. Good pitch to put Scotty away. Bring up Wes Wilford with two outs. One of the few hit getters in the first game for Surface Paradise. Single out to right field. She takes first pitch strike. Fouls pitch to back behind home plate. Was down 0 and 2. Member of the under 18 Queensland team and member of the Australian squad as well, Wes. Very talented youngster. Big future ahead of him. Spells another one back. Couple stints, B grade and A grade this year for Wes, but really found a home for himself at second base at the end of the year. Swinging the bat really well and playing some good defense. Certainly earned his spot on this team. Mm, youngest kid on the team too, can play. As swings through, curveball in the dirt for strike three, throw down first is in time. Inning is over. We go into the bottom of the second, surface up 1-0. So uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Bottom of the second. Um, anybody interested in the surfers end of season presentation night? Bookings are closing. Make sure you get in touch with uh, someone from surfers and they will point you in the right direction. $75 a head paid to the club. Full buffet. It's gonna be a great evening. Last year was an absolute hoot. Everybody had a great time, and uh, it's well it's a well worth it and a great evening. B grade team will be in their suits, suiting up after grand final suiting win. Suiting up, yes. What teams suit up after a win? Hopefully, we've got a few more to add to that after tonight. Fingers no. are crossed. As we head off to the bottom of the second, leading off for Redlands is Matt Wyatt. Declan, 11 pitches through the first inning. Very effective in his past couple starts as well. His first pitch is taken high for a ball. Declan struck out his first eight batters he saw in his last outing against Pine Rivers to get surface here. And has really hit a purple patch in form lately. The second pitch is taken and upstairs for a ball. Looked to be good placement. Jerry just asking the question of the umpire where that was. Just a little high. Fights straight back with a fastball on the hands. Get himself back in the count, 2-1. Lively fastball tonight, Dex, sitting 88 to 89. See if he can touch 90 tonight. And a 
great pitch on the outside part. Strike two. Foul tipped. Fast ball taken out to right field. Harry White is there for the catch. Harry White being absolutely locking down out there at right field. Not only has his bat come a long way this year, defensively as well, Harry, almost like a wave of confidence out there. Very comfortable under the high ball. It's Kyle Pike, the hero from Friday night, Pike in the last, rocks up to the plate. Takes strike one on the inside part, 88. Curve ball misses low. Take it to one and one. Fastball heavy approach from Declan tonight. Has worked out. Retired the first four. As the next pitch. Swung on and missed for strike two. Up to 89, Declan. Payoff pitch comes in. Broken bat up the middle, which stops knocked down by Wes. No play to be made. It's an expensive single for Carl Pike. But first of the game for Redlands. Wesley fielding that one and uh, sliding about 10 metres on this wet grass. So. Struggling to get a footing and uh, on those kind of plays this evening might be a factor. Track report came out for a soft six. Soft six? Soft six. Right. It's first pitch, curve ball taken for a strike. It's Carl Ashby strides the plate. First base run of the night for Redlands. Pick attempt at first, unsuccessful. Swing and a miss, strike two. Ashby's down two strikes, runner on first, one out. Looking to keep this one off the ground. Pitch, curve ball taken away. Ball two. Declan throwing an overpowering fastball as it seems tonight. Don't be surprised if he goes back to that on the outside part of the plate. Locates up, fouls it off. Staying alive. Curve ball hit to the right side, stopped by Wes, onto two for one, and first in time for the double play. Surface blue wave turn a double play to end the inning. It's what they exactly what they wanted from that and what Redlands wanted to avoid. Flashing some glove out there, Wes Wilford. Very cool, karma collective Wes out there at second base. Getting dirty on that last play, and then They'll flip the second and then the put out at first with a double play. Well done. Surface head into the top of the third. A little bit of momentum here. As that Suki two lead it off. One nil.
So just getting word from the surfers, captain, leader of the ship, Tony McPhail watching along at home, good to have you aboard. And uh, for those interested, you can email or text Tony about those tickets to the presentation. He will point you in the right direction and give you the details required. So top of the third here, surfers still leading one, nothing. And Atsuki Takahashi at the plate. Takes strike one low. Swings third ball. Throw is in time. Play is made by Dan Turner over at third base. Also played a great third base all series. Defense has been a big key here for both teams as not a lot has happened as far as runs. We had three runs scored in the first game and four in the, four in the second. So you can tell first pitch, Andy home run. We've got a long way to deciding this game as Sam takes ball one low. Every run is crucial. Ball two also taken low, the same spot. Sam gets ahead 2-0. I noticed in the uh, Div 2 game that Sam was playing in, he hits up the centre a lot and they were playing a shift in second baseman. Sending almost behind second base uh, when Sam was at bat. It seems to be his go-to shot up the middle. And um, right now that area is wide open. Well, we know what he's after. Uses wheels to get on base. He swings and hits a slow ground ball to third base. Turner over the first. That's two. Couple of ground outs to third tonight. Third baseman's getting a workout. Brings up home run hero Andy Cosgrove. Fails a betting man. I'd be betting on not a first pitch fastball. Yes, this one might be low and away. Rasmus shakes off the first pitch and deals. Fastball high. Up and in. Fastball taken low. Just from the offset, um, service dug out a lot louder than the Redland race. Not a lot of vocal. Um, on the bench. And a good play there by the shortstop for the Rays on the run. Catching that little blooper on the uh, just off the dirt onto the grass. It's been everywhere with the glove this, this and, series, uh, Gomez. Yeah, quick quick uh, three and out there. As we head to the bottom of the third, surface up one nothing. Game moving along quite quickly. Very fortunate to uh, be able to put this live stream on this evening after the rain delays. A lot of uh, schedule changes, and there was a uh, talk of putting it off till next week. And uh, I would have been under a under a tarp camping in Pottsville, uh, that would have made it pretty difficult to make it all the way to Windsor for a live stream um, with a ring still on my finger. Got to know your priorities in life sometimes, am I right? That's it. I'm, I'm, I made a deal with my lovely wife, Kristen, that if the boys get a win tonight, that I will make the presentation. 
uh, if they happen to drop this game, then she's got me for the holiday. Sorry, honey, we're one nil up. Jerry puts a throw on the money over to second base. Leading off. Dan Turner strides in to lead off the bottom of the third. First pitch taken inside for a ball. Declan, 88, starting exactly where he picked off last inning. Pitch taken for a ball as well. Declan backs back inning, starting off ball, ball. Stan Turner, a very, very difficult out. I can speak from experience, having seen a ball leave the yard that I have thrown to him as he takes strike one down the middle. Does that keep you up at night? No, well, there's multiple people. I, you wait until the next batter comes up and I tell you that ball hasn't landed yet. As Daniel swings through, fastball up for strike two, making the count two and two. Pitch hit on the right side, fielded by Jail, take it to himself for the first out of the innings. Declan steaming through at the moment. Thirty pitches through is two point one. Bringing up Kynan and Melanda. Speaking of big homers, ball hasn't landed. Still going. No. I had to go physio the other day. Bad neck after watching that ball fly as he takes ball one outside. Does a winter night erase any of those memories? <laughs> Look. Goes a long way? Does go a long way. It's the pitch swung on and fouled back. No solid contact made so far tonight by Redlands off Declan. As he gets up 2-0. Oh, 2 my add. He fouls that one into the Redlands dugout and you heard that. Rattle about. Rattle in the back. No ugly finder tonight as they got away with one there. Declan up 0-2 oh, with three straight fastballs. Don't be surprised if he tries to change the eye level here. Fastball misses high. Swung on, and that'll be a base hit out to left field. Redlands with another one out single to left field. Bring up Beckham Crooks, another nine hitter tonight. Only early on in the game, but very big moment considering the stakes placed on this game. Throws over to first. Beckham generally an infielder by trade, been playing a lot of right field this year. Has a lot of a lot of infield depth to the Redland Rays. So takes a fastball high. Ah! 
it'll wobble on first there. There is speed over there at first. It's foul ball hit back behind home plate. Redlands not a big stolen base team. Not the, very, not the most aggressive teams on the base paths, whereas Surface Paradise league leaders in stolen bases, I believe. As Beckham takes a strike on the outside part of the plate. One ball, two strikes, an eerie familiar count as he throws back and that gets away at first base. And a late jump and Jai, throw will not be in time. Jai appearing to slip down the first base line. The uh, runner for the Rays looking at a dive back to first and then having to do the beach sprint jump and run and uh, looked like Jai had enough time if he got to his feet but a uh, little slight slip there. Might be seeing a downgrade to a heavy eight. Steck, Beckham slow ground ball to right side fielded by Wes in time for the out. Which will bring up Ryan Duncan with the runner on third two out. Already a big moment for the Redland Rays. Third, two outs. First pitch is taken high, curveball for a ball. Swung through, fastball low. One and one. Ryan Duncan, a stalwart for the Redland Race. Former ABL player, very, very handy in the field end with the bat. Also rolls the arm over and can do more than a hell of a job. He takes strike two. Declan up to 90. First time he's touched 90 to 9. Big pitch. Not a bad time to do it. Let's see if he can go high. Payoff pitch. Swung on, ground to Atsuki at shortstop, gets it off in time for the third out. Declan gets out of a little bit of a jam in the second and the third inning. As we head to the top of the fourth, surface with a 1-0 lead. And... Uh in between innings here, I just want to, again, I cannot praise Windsor enough for their hospitality. They're absolute legends putting us up here in the luxury suite again. Um, Owen, uh, Owen, from, Owen from Windsor, not Owen Drinkwater, but um, absolute legend for helping me out with uh, running cables and getting me anything I need and um, offering some assistance. And uh, it seems he's uh, also pretty interested in my equipment for for the club here to invest in so for those who aren't who aren't able to see the setup here just to give you a little bit of an insight as to what we've got on here we've got about 4,000 wires we've got a Ryobi power drill battery which is connected to it's a USB topper <laughs> extra USB outputs it, look it it does look like uh, spaghetti. But it's effective spaghetti. Spaghetti is awesome. Gets the job done. So Ricky Deba will step in to face the top of the second. First up bat ended with a ground out to the pitcher. Has been called the more favourited Diebel of the team. Didn't hear that from me as he takes ball one on the inside part of the plate. It, it is on tape for all time now. 
I you're... agree with the statement. I'm just saying it d didn't come from me. D d the Deeble parents, please chime in with your favourite uh, Deeble. We'd love to know. Uh, I believe that's Katie currently playing basketball. <laughs> as third pitch taken for a strike on the outside part of the plate. Two one pitch taken on the outside part of the plate. Erasmus down three one to start to lead off the top of the fourth. Ricky swings line drive into right field for a base hit. Beckham will get that in. Ricky with lead off single. This top of the order for the blue wave always looking to do some damage. Very dangerous when uh, in position to score as well. So we'll see if we can get a run here with no outs. Especially with a bit of speed over at first base. Ricky, double digit stolen bases on the year. It's a couple stolen bases this series as well. As Jai steps in, check swing. Get runs in that if you're playing cricket, but that's off, failed off to the right side. Zoologist Rory Summerford informing us there's a duck out at left field. I don't know if that's an omen or a... Just a duck in left field. A little bit of rain. It is Not good weather for ducks, surprised. as they say. <laughs> Jai hits a slow ground ball to third base. Won't be enough to turn two, but great play in the stretch from Matt Wyatt. I tell you what, I think I tore a groin just watching that. Yep, my hamstrings are gone. But, uh, advances the runners nonetheless. So runner on second, one out. I dare say that may be clipped up and he might replay that. Just to show off the athletic prowess over there at first base. There's a lot of uh, big, bulky first baseman and I can say that because I used to be one. I don't know how I get down, but it's a lot slower getting up. Harrison White steps in, 0 for 1 on the night. Strike out in the first. Big situation, runner on two. Takes a ball low. Harry on the year, 388 with nine home runs. Only 85 at bats as well. Harry, starting 23 games. Quite an impressive stat line considering the amount of games he played as he swings and pops that foul off to the left side. Swings, fouls that one off down the right field line. Two strikes on him. Harry, the team leader in RBIs on the year with 34 in his 23 games started. Be a great time to add to that tally. Stepping in with a two strike pitch and taken outside for a ball. Hey, 
Ricky over at second base, dancing away, doing his best. Pick off. I wouldn't say attempted, but feints it out to second base, keeping Ricky close to the bag. Lefty in the box, very, very unlikely to see many stolen base with lefty in the box as the pitch is swung on and missed and thrown on to first base for the outs. Two down, bringing up Jerry Lekeo. Jerry, somewhat of a local these days. I believe season number Five, if I'm counting correctly. Sounds about right. Yep. Hates the Gold Coast. You'll never see him at Burley. He's a uh, world traveller. Does love it. Off to Prague, his next stop. Jerry, as he digs in and takes the ball low to start the count. I think he said he's uh, heading off just after Anzac Day, end of April, so... Make sure you get around Jerry and... Still a bit of time to enjoy the sunshine. Mustn't like winter. Colorado. Mm. Not much snow out there. No Alps or anything like that as he takes the ball in. Jerry, very tough out. Hits to all parts. And has juice to leave the yard. Jerry also part of the last Surface Paradise team to take home the A grade championship six years ago today. 2018 at this very field. Also in that series, some weather weather implications from, uh, from what I've read. I wasn't there, obviously. I was. Very wet. Um, very hard to get moving in the dirt. Actually was Jerry's runner for catcher back then. And yeah, you weren't moving. A lot of puddles in the field, but doesn't matter how you get them, a win's a win at the end of the day. They all look the same in the scorebook. As curveball taken for a strike. Make sure you're sharing the live stream link on your Facebook profiles. Get all your family and baseball friends in here. Jerry, thousand pitch back to stay alive. Big situation here. No one holding on Ricky at second base, looking to get far enough off as Jerry takes another ball low, which will fill up the count. Payoff pitch is swung on, hit to the left side of the field. Knocked down by Gomez at short. Unable to make the play, but saving a run, potentially saving a run in the process. As Jake Scott comes on for runner for catcher for Jerry. Two out, Scott Cronin up to bat. Known for his big bat, Scott Cronin. First season back from shoulder surgery. Still finding his feet, putting on quite a few good swings at the back end of the regular season. Comes up the big, big moment here, the top of the fourth. First and second, first and third, two out. 
had a couple uh, clutch hits already in the one against the uh, Rapids. Driving in a run. He swings through the first pitch. Look to him to stay aggressive this at bat, not wait around too long, try to get it done early in the count. I believe also goes by the mindset of the easiest way to hit a curveball is hit the fastball. As ball one is taken on the outside part. As we have had an Owen drink water siding. Everyone can breathe a sigh of relief. You, you, Daniel, you're doing an absolutely fantastic job. You're uh, definitely on the volunteer list for the uh, co-commentator. It's ever-growing. got an epic bullpen of commentators at my uh, disposal. Two out, first and third. Ducks on a pond. Duck in left field. Big moment here, Scott Cronin. One ball, two strikes. Look for potential movement over there at first base as Jake's off to second. Scott fouls that ball back off to the right side. Scotty digs in. One ball, two strikes. First and third, two outs. No movement at first base as Scott takes the ball in. Good patient at bat here by Scott Cronin. Try and get that count in his advantage. 2-2, two -two. expecting something with a little bit of movement in this pitch. Also a bit of movement at first base. That slider low and away got him the last at bat. Strikes off, curve ball, swung through, strike three. Erasmus gets out of the jam, first and third stranded to end the inning. As we head to the bottom of the fourth, surface still leading 1-0. We are back, bottom of the fourth. Service to like one to zero. So thank Daniel. Daniel Grant for joining me in the booth this evening. To start off this game. We uh, transition to 
go to the bullpen of the commentators and uh, I'm, I might say, and I, I don't mind saying, crowd favorite Owen the Statman Drinkwater. Thanks, John. Good to be back. I apologize for being late. No, no, no. For those who don't know, I'm out in Kingaroy these days, Monday to Thursday. So it worked out selfishly yes. for me that the game ended up Thursday night uh, as Gomez fouls one back. Um, just to add some detail to the earlier conversations you guys had, as you are correct, I was listening in the car, so I appreciate the shout Fantastic. out. Um, I did check with the dugout on the way by, and it, um, the pitch limits have been lifted. So anyone is available for any number of pitches tonight, um, other than the usual, I assume, uh, game limit of 120. So uh, we'll see what we get from Nit later, um, see how far Erasmus goes. As Gomez swings through it for strike three. And so one away here in the bottom of the fourth, and that'll bring up Tyson Zamora. Uh, Dan Grant, who did a wonderful job on the stream, um, the first few innings here did bring up the defense in this series and how it's been a big role. I think it would be, we'd be remiss not to mention Zamora's catch on Sunday. Similar to, to Jai Diebel's home run on Friday, which was a, a pivotal moment in the game mm. that ultimately did not end up changing the outcome, Zamora's catch was the same. Uh, as he swings through a fastball from Summerford yep. for strike one, um, making a, a beautiful leaping, diving grab with a couple runners on and nobody out uh, late in that game that to big. keep it close. Yep. Yeah, like you said, Jai's uh, home run on, like, what was that, Friday night, over the flags in right field, it was, it was um, pretty much the same as Dex throws 90 again on that one. Uh, Andy's first pitch home run going in the same direction with the same velocity. That's it. I was, I was not wholly surprised, but impressed to hear Kazi lead the game off with a homer on the first pitch. He is known to, to have a crack at that first pitch fastball if it's left out over the yeah. plate. So. Uh, I don't think I could have handled this game going nil all again for eight innings straight. I'm glad there's some action early. So 2-1 to Zamora is swung on and hit into right field. Harry White coming on. And this plays it. And just bounces right off the glove, went right through it there. Sam Foster picks it up behind him and throws it in. So that'll be a reach on E9 for Zamora uh, as the fly ball was relatively routine. Looked like White Stutter stepped out there a little bit. May have had a little trouble seeing it in the lights and just lost track of it. So an unfortunate base runner to reach for surfers as Zamora, one of the fastest on this Redlands team. We'll talk a little bit more about Declan Summerford here. I don't think we've fully given his flowers, given him his flowers yet for the season that he had. So Summerford, the regular season, 64 and two thirds innings, five and three record. Scattered 62 hits, gave up 31 earned runs and 81 strikeouts. 22 walks for an ERA of 4.3. His playoff numbers. 14 innings, 1-0, only 8 hits, 4 runs, and 17 punch-outs, and just one walk for Summerford. So 14 innings with one walk and 8 hits is a, an extremely low whip, and so he is not allowing many base runners. That's a 2.57 ERA for Summerford to this point. And then for those uh, watching at home who aren't familiar with baseball, that is very, very good. Very good. So a whip which is not a stat that's shown on the GBL website, but that is walks plus hits per inning. Anything under about 1.0 is elite. And Summerford now 14 and a third as these stats update live and only nine runs means his whip's about 0.67. Summerford sitting 87 to 90 on the fastball tonight. We'll give you a little bit of detail into Erasmus's numbers uh, the next time we have him out here. Two and one on white now. Summerford over to first. Wyatt 0 for 1 tonight. And it'll be Kyle Pike and Kai Ashby to follow. Pike 1 for 1 today. 2 1 now coming to Wyatt. And taking fastball on the outside half for strike two. Zamora has not shown any interest in running to this point. Lakeo, very good defensive catcher back there, and Redlands not a team that steals a lot of bases. 2-2 coming. 
and fastball ground and foul. Another ball into the Redlands dugout. Yep. It's um, handy here that uh, Windsor have these player benches outside of the dugout. Um, normally that one would be bouncing off a few bodies. Two two now. Someone for up to 56 pitches, 39 strikes. Very efficient to this point. And fastball just down off the outside corner. Count will go to three and two. So we'll see what Redlands does here, see if they release Zamora from first. They've already hit into one double play tonight and they have their fastest base runner on. Zamora staying and Wyatt line drive in the right field. That is going to split the outfielders and it's going to go almost to the wall. White cuts it off and throws it in. Zamora being held at third and no play at second. Wyatt's going to go into second with a stand up double. So a nice piece of hitting there from Matt Wyatt. Summerford feeding him fastballs away the whole at bat. And Wyatt takes the last one he sees and deposits it into the right center field gap. And Redlands now with their biggest threat. Second and third, one away. And Steve Chambers acting as de facto pitching coach tonight, it seems, out to speak with Summerford. Chambers back to the dugout now, and Lakeo will go back to the plate. We'll see if Summerford turns the dial here a little bit. We talked about this with Josh Warner on Sunday when we had him in the booth. Great pitchers being able to find an extra gear when they're in a jam. So Summerford will be tested here. Infield playing back for surfers. Looks like they'd concede the run on a softly hit ground ball. And first pitch breaking ball outside for ball one. Pike with the single last time that Wilford was able to knock down. And keep in the infield. And pitch is fastball dribbled foul to the right side. And the count evens up at one and one. Like the hero Friday night, we talked about that already. Singled up the middle off of Doug Breeze, who came into a bases loaded one out situation, and that won the game for Redlands 2 1. 1 1 pitch coming. Fastball right past Kyle Pike, and the count goes to 1 and 2. That one 89 miles an hour from Stoneford on the black, which is the outer edge of the plate. Infield still back for surfers, outfield straight up. One two pitch coming. Swing and a miss. He struck him out 92 miles an hour from Summerford up in the zone. And that's that extra gear we've been talking about. A big spot for Summerford to unleash his fastest fastball of the night. Big out there for Declan and the Blue Wave uh, now. Redlands down to their final out of the inning. So Summerford with an electrifying fastball there. That's the hardest ball we've seen thrown in this series. And he has been, by, by a bit of a margin, the hardest thrower so far on the mound. We did see Doug Breeze in the upper 80s on Friday night. Nice block from Jerry Lakeo there on a the first pitch curveball to keep it in front. Reese Nitt touched 86 on Friday night. We didn't see anything harder than that on Sunday from anyone. 
And a little bit of extra juice is flowing here in game three of this grand final series. 1-0 count now on Ashby. Pitch is a fastball, squib towards third. Cosgrove stays down, throws across. Stiebel off the bag, but makes the swipe tag. And Summerford gets out of it. A little bit of emotion coming off the mound. And Surfers holds the one nothing lead as we'll go to the top of the fifth. So it'll be Wilfred Takahashi and Foster, 789 in the Surfers lineup to lead off the fifth. I do apologize and appreciate the help from Matt Beebe on this one. I, and I apologize to Matt Boyce for forgetting about his outing on Sunday, uh, touching 88 miles an hour. So we've got a couple of guys in the upper eights, hadn't seen anyone into the 90s until Summerford tonight. Although you do have to imagine if Boyce is out there later tonight, he's got that uh, in the arsenal as well. I, by the sounds of it, he looks jacked up and ready to go. So. He's going to be pushing some big numbers. That's it. You're hearing a lot of Matt, Matt Boyce in the dugout, which is uh, always a good thing. So Wilford 0 for 1 tonight with a strikeout. First pitch from Erasmus, fastball driven into center field. Zamora settles underneath it and puts it away for out number one. So Wilford just underneath it, put a good swing on it. We'll have a look at Erasmus and the season he had. So Erasmus, 36 innings to a 6-2 and two record, 38 hits, 16 earned runs, 36 strikeouts, and 11 walks. That's good for 3.96 ERA. In the playoffs so far, and these numbers tend to update live, so this will include what he's done in this game as the first pitch to Takahashi is a strike. Erasmus, 14 innings, 1-0 record, 9 hits, 1 earned run, and 20 strikeouts. That's a 0 0.64 ERA. And it makes plenty of sense why you'd have this, this guy on the mound in the, uh, in the game deciding, in this, excuse me, series deciding game three. 0-2 now on Takahashi, who fouled the last one off to the right. And pitches a big breaking ball in the dirt. Count goes to one and two on the surfer shortstop. Sam Foster on deck, on deck. Veteran for this surfer's club, we had him in the booth on Sunday. Pitches a fastball fouled away and we'll do it again. is in the dirt for ball two. <laughs> so Takashi works the count back to even. And the 2-2 pitch, breaking ball foul. Looked like it bounced up and hit Takahashi somewhere up near the head, chest or head area. So he'll walk that off. Foster checking on him, Takahashi says he's okay. Oh, 
So 2-2 two -two coming again to Takahashi, who's done a good job to work the count. Erasmus up to 68 pitches. And the 2-2 two -two fastball fouled back and will do it again. Erasmus in the low 80s with the fastball. And the breaker's been in the mid to high 60s. Also working efficiently, as is Summerford. So Erasmus 67% strikes to this point. And Summerford perhaps a shade more efficient. As Takahashi takes ball three in the dirt and has now worked the count full. So really nice at bat for Atsuki Takahashi here. This will be pitch number eight coming. For a guy that's usually a free swinger. 3-2 count. Fastball down and Takahashi takes a walk. So a great at bat to work back from 0-2. Erasmus a little bit frustrated. And that'll pass the baton to Foster. So good speed for surfers on first and in the box. Big spot for Foster getting the start in this game. Talked a little bit about it before with uh, John and Dan bringing it up. Replacing Max Durrington. Uh, to call Max Durrington a rising star, I think would be a disservice to him. His star has risen and will only continue to glow brighter. And as Foster shows, Bunt takes outside. So Durrington a big missing piece for surfers tonight, but Sam Foster more than up to the task. And we had a great chat with him on Sunday about just this, just this idea. Playing your part, knowing your role. 1-0 coming. And pitches in there, slider for strike one. One one coming now to Foster. Pitches in there for strike two. Foster not a huge fan of the call. Looked like he might have thought it was inside. Takes a step out, gathers himself, steps back in, wearing those same same mid cut pants that he's been wearing all weekend. One two coming now with one away. The dangerous Andy Cosgrove in the on deck circle. Throw over, and Takahashi gets back. So it'll be a 1-2 coming to Foster. Erasmus' 75th pitch as Takahashi leads away from first. The pitch is grounded foul. Another one bouncing up off the head area. So Foster will do it again. And a little bit of stirring now in the Redlands bullpen. The one-two pitch. Breaking ball fouled at the plate. Foster does a nice job to stay alive. That one's 67 miles an hour after the last couple of pitches in the upper 70s. And it looks like recent it out there. Starting to loosen up. Takahashi away from first. As Erasmus comes set, Foster working the count well here. Seeing pitches. One, two. Fastball, check swing, looper out towards second. Melander in to grab it and flips on to first and makes the play. Looks like Foster didn't want to go around on that one. So that'll be a 4-3, moves Takahashi to second. And it's Andy Cosgrove striding to the plate. Cosgrove, the difference in this game, home run to lead off the top of the first on the first pitch he saw. And Kazi, such an important part of this Surfers Club this year, last year. That goes for all of the imports that we've had at this Surfers Club. For those that don't know, the top teams in the GBL are allowed three international imports. And we've had a number of phenomenal contributors the last couple of years. As Cosgrove will see the first pitch. 
breaking ball in the first strike. We got Jerry Lakeo obviously behind the dish and, and Cosgrove playing third this year. We had last year, we had AJ Fell, shout out AJ, who was about as dominant as it gets on the mound. If there was a Cy Young Award in the GBL, you'd have to be considering him for it. As pitches fastball down. So one on one now to Cosgrove. Fell last year second in the league in ERA to Connor McDonald, and I believe he gave up about half of his earned runs in his very first outing when he had only been off the plane for about a week. As Cosgrove lashes one into right center field, and it's cut off by Crooks, but to no avail as Takahashi's gonna come around and score. Cosgrove fired up at first base going back to the bag, and it's two nothing surfers. And we were just talking about these imports rising to the occasion. Andy Cosgrove says, "Put, get on my back and I will carry you. Two nothing. Cosgrove still the difference. And it'll be Ricky Diebel coming to the plate. And Diebel sees a pitch just down for ball one. Cosgrove now two for three tonight. Yeah, she doesn't do it no more. His home run and the RBI single, the difference in this game. Two nothing surfers here in the fifth. Winner takes home the trophy. As Diebel swings through a fastball upstairs. So we have 1-1 coming now to Ricky Diebel, his brother Jai Diebel on deck. And pitches breaking ball down, 2-1 to Diebel now. Diebel one for two. Grounded out to first and singled. So two balls to the right side so far. Defense straight up. Infield and outfield. Cosgrove a threat to run, but not showing any signs to this point. 2-1 now. And Diebel swings through a breaking ball, 2-2. Two and two. So Erasmus, three separate speeds tonight. Fastball's been around 80 miles an hour. He's got what is likely a slider coming in at about 74. And a big, slow curveball at about 67. as Nick continues to loosen in the Redlands pen. No action in the bullpen for surface to this point. Pitch to Diebel, there's that big slow curveball down and into the lefty for strike three. So surfers will go down, but not before Andy Cosgrove puts another run on the board for the blue wave and will go to the bottom of the fifth, two nothing. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> so back here in the bottom of the fifth, as Summerford comes set, and first pitch to Dan Turner is downstairs for ball one. Turner 0 for 1 tonight with a ground out to first as he swings through a fastball and the count goes even. One one now coming from Summerford. Fastball again up to 89 there and Turner swings through it up and away. And the count now to one and two. As momentum behind Summerford growing with a two nothing lead now. And pitch is flared foul, 90 miles an hour there from Declan. So Nitt now throwing in the bullpen. Makes you wonder what the plan was or is for Redlands. You figure he may have been wanting to come in to protect a lead at some point in this game. But at some stage, as pitches fastball loop towards first, caught by Jai Diebel, and that'll be the first out. At some point, had to expect to see Reese Nitt once Erasmus gets close to his pitch count. So it'll be Melander now. And first pitch is a fastball just off the edge. Another 90 mile an hour fastball from Summerford who appears to be dialing it up here in the later innings. And fastball down, fastball called strike one. My apologies, I had called that myself a little bit early. So Melander not a fan of the call as was the, uh, nor was the Redlands crowd. And count goes to one and one. Pitch is another fastball, this one up and away. So Melander's seen three fastballs in a row to this point. He had singled through the left side his first time. It'll be a 2-1 now from Summerford. And another fastball just misses on the inside corner there. So Summerford nibbling, nibbling around the corners. Melander not biting. 3-1 count now to the Redland second baseman. The pitch is fastball in the outside corner and the count goes full. So Summerford shown only fastballs to Melander in this at bat. We'll see if he goes back to it or pulls the string on full count. Full count pitch, fastball downstairs, Melander takes ball four. So first walk issued by Summerford, who's now up to 75 pitches. Brings up the young right fielder Beckham Crooks for Redlands. Hitting out of the nine hole tonight. Crooks grounded out to second his first time. Looks like Josh Warner just getting a little bit loose out there in the surfer's bullpen, not throwing. Just starting to think about it. As first pitch is from Summerford, grounded just foul down the right side. one coming now from Summerford. And another fastball in the outside corner for strike two. Just catching up on the chat here. Thank you, Greg Cosgrove, Andy's dad. Shout out Washington State. Shout out the Cosgrove family, without whom this game would be 0-0 zero zero at best. <laughs> yes, I hope, Greg, you uh, were tuned in from the first pitch because it was a big one. And pitch is a breaking ball. 74 miles an hour on the curveball there from Summerford off the outside for ball one. So Summerford featuring a 15 mile differential between the fastball and the curveball. That's difficult for any hitter. And Ben Foster as the one-two coming grounded through the right side. Harry White comes on and looks at first base, but then just throws the ball in wisely. 
So nice hitting from Crooks, the nine hitter to punch one through the right side. And Redlands again in business, one out here in the bottom of the fifth, as we'll go to the top of the order. Uh, ben Foster asking for the team name on Game Changer. Not sure that GBL1 is scored on Game Changer, but if you go to Ball Clubs and find the GBL League, all the numbers are kept there. And the live scoring as well. So Ryan Duncan steps in now for his third trip. Curveball inside for ball one. Duncan 0 for 2, grounded out to third and grounded out to short his last two times. Big spot here for the Redlands veteran left fielder. Pitch is a fastball, grounded, knocked down by Summerford. Gonna go over to first. A nice job by Summerford to get one there on a ball that could have gone up the middle. Hard to say whether that would have been a double play or would have been a single up the middle. Summerford didn't have a choice but to knock that one down as it sort of landed on his cleat. Didn't have too much time to react. And so now it's Anthony Gomez, the star import shortstop for the Rays. He's had a good series, couple of hits in both games, played a sparkling defense out there at short. 0 for 2 tonight. Another big spot for Summerford. Second and third, two outs. He saw the same spot last inning and worked out of it with a grounder to third. First pitch fastball, 90 miles an hour, just off the outside edge for ball one. It's Melander at third, Crooks at second. The 1-0 is a curveball downstairs. 2-0 now on Gomez. The center fielder Tyson Zamora on deck. And it'd be Matt Wyatt to follow should it get that far. Big pitch in this game right now, 2-0 to Gomez with two on. Pitch is a fastball, 88 miles an hour, just missing. Three zero now on Gomez. And you wonder if he has the green light here. Looks like he did. Swings and drives one to center. Foster drifting back and makes the catch. So a great job by Summerford to get out of the inning. Gomez just a little bit behind that fastball from Summerford, and will go to the sixth. Surfers dancing out of trouble again and leading two to nothing. So it's Jai Diebel lead off against Erasmus here in the top of the sixth and first pitch big swing from Diebel on a slider fouls it back. 
Update on the bullpen situation. Looks like Josh Warner out there and on the rubber for surfers. Not throwing uh, with intent at this point, but he's out there. And Nitt appears to be throwing with a little bit closer to intent there. As Diebel takes a slider on the outside corner for strike two. Jai Diebel 0 for 2 with a strikeout today. Strikeout and a ground out to third. Big breaking ball swung on and missed in the dirt. Ashby with a nice block and makes the throw down the first to retire Diebel for the first out of the inning. So Diebel down on three pitches. And it'll be surfers right fielder Harry White coming to the plate. White 0 for 2, two strikeouts today. Talked a lot about Harry White and the progress he's made as he takes strike one over the inside corner. One thing he was prone to this year was the strikeout. We'd always have a laugh with Harry about being a three true outcomes guy. Strikeouts, walks, home runs as he takes ball one in the dirt. One pitch is downstairs, ball two. So Harry White ahead in the count. Erasmus, 91 pitches to this point now. And number 92 coming to Harry White as Nick continues to throw. And pitch is grounded up the middle, base hit by Harry White. So a nice job to stay back on the breaking ball by White. It's a hard ground ball right up the middle. Clean single for number 10. So one out, one on now for Lakeo. Lakeo slammed a double off the wall on Sunday's game, just missing a home run. One for two tonight with an F7 fly out to left and a single. Infield single. So it's wide away from first. First pitch to Lakeo, fastball in there for strike one. Nice job by Ashby there to bring that one up into the bottom of the zone. one coming now, and pitch is nubbed out towards the pitcher. Erasmus will pick it up and flip it over to first for the second out as White moves to second. So Lakeo way out in front of that one, just caught it off the very end of the bat as his swing was coming through, and just a little side spin dribbler out towards Erasmus who fielded it cleanly. Scott Cronin now, with two away and White leading away from second. Surfers with some two out magic in the fifth from Cosgrove in a similar situation. We'll see if Cronin can repeat the same feat. And he lines one to the right side, throw for a base hit. Harry White makes the turn as that ball was knocked down by Melander. There's gonna be no play, and Harry White comes home. Surfers leading three nothing, so a big hit from Scott Cronin. And what do you think, John, deja vu from the fifth? Same exact thing. Cosgrove with a line drive out that way and Cronin with the same, same thing. A ball that Melander is kicking himself out there for not making the play on. Did not lay out. And ball knocked off his glove. Hit hard by Cronin, likely scored a single. So a nice job by the surfers offense to push another one across. They lead 3-0 now as Wilford steps in. First pitch from Erasmus, a fastball. And Wilford swings and misses for strike one. So three nothing now for the Blue Wave. Warner and Nick continuing to throw in their respective bullpens. 
Wilford, Wilford will see an 0-1, and it's a big, slow curveball, 67 miles an hour for strike two. Yeah, good shot there by Scott Cronin. Watch that ball all the way onto the bat. Looked like he placed it really nicely. 0-2 to Wilford now as Cronin takes off. Pitch is in the dirt, and no throw from Ashby. Good pitch to run on for Cronin. And so now Wilford in a similar situation with a chance to knock in another run for the Blue Wave. Big spot here for the young Wilford. Surfers dugout firing up. Wilford 0 for 2 tonight. 1-2 pitch coming. Pitch is a fastball in there for strike three. Wilford perhaps looking for something different, walks off without an argument. And so Surfers is retired, but not before an RBI single from Scott Cronin gets the Blue Wave out to a 3-0 lead as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Back here in the Redlands half of the sixth, it'll be Tyson Zamora, Matt Wyatt, the first two, and then Kyle Pike to follow. Still Summerford as Warner throws with purpose now in the surfer's bullpen. Summerford 84 pitches, 55 strikes, but was in a spot of trouble in the fourth and the fifth. And Kevin Fenwith, all of his arms available tonight due to the rainouts. Not going to take any chances as uh, Zamora takes a fastball strike. Zamora 0 for 2 with a strikeout tonight. Also reached on the F9 as he takes strike 2. Another fastball from Summerford, so quickly in the hole 0 and 2. Reached on the E9, rather. 0 2 now from Summerford. Pitches. Swung on a miss. Foul tipped into the glove of Lakeo. And three straight fastballs sends Zamora back to the bench as Matt Wyatt comes to the plate with one out here in the sixth. Ben Morris, I see your question in the chat. The only insight I can provide is I have been told that Windsor has extended the curfew here to 10.30. I don't know if that means that we are extended on time and whether or not this game goes nine. Pitch from Summerford lined into left field by Wyatt for a single. So fastball Wyatt able to get a round on. He'll go to two for three tonight. So one on and one out now here for Pike. Pike one for two tonight.
Three nothing surfers here in the bottom of the six. Wyatt dances away from first, trying to time up Summerford. Mistimed it. Pitches a breaking ball outside for ball one. In there now for a strike. So it'll be a 1-1 one, one now to Pike with Wyatt away from first. One out here in the Redlands half of the sixth. And time is called. The pitch is hammered into left field. Coming on Ricky Diebel. He'll make a sliding catch out there in left as Wyatt will go back to first base. So nice play by Ricky Diebel to squeeze that one. And two away now for Ashby. It's those looping line drives, similar height to the one that gave Harry White trouble out and right a couple innings ago. Those are the tough ones for these outfielders with the lights on. And with the Soviet conditions. Definitely not helping. So it's Ashby now to face Summerford. First pitch fastball is in there for a strike. <laughs> 0 1 now from Summerford. Pitch is fastball on the outside edge for strike two. Ashby not a fan of the call, 90 miles an hour there from Summerford. We'll see if he goes back to the well and cranks it up a little more. First one was 87. And pitches another fastball right by Ashby, who swings through it. Summerford with a K strut and walks off the mound. Another 90 mile an hour heater from the surfer's starter, and we'll go to the top of the seventh. Three nothing. Blue Wave, nine outs away from a championship. Yes, we just want to thank everyone tuning in, getting up some really good numbers tonight. Almost close to a PB, so get those uh, live streams shared to your friends and family. Witnessing this decider, game three of the three game series. And uh, it looks like we have a pitching change here for the Redland Rays. Nick coming to the mound. Um, closing in on 400 subscribers as well. Jumped up, uh, I think, about 12 subscribers in the last seven days. So I appreciate everyone jumping on board and getting sharing the love and spreading the word. Um, so, uh, yeah, closing in on a, on a big number. So appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'll plug the stream for sure. Guys, John Reimers works extremely hard, and obviously we have a lot of Blue Wave fans that follow the stream. Um, but if you're someone who's, who's a Redland supporter or someone who supports a different team in the GBL or someone who supports a different team on the Gold Coast, um, you'll find John streaming games from, from all across the different divisions at times. And, you know, even if it's a chance to watch your team play surfers when they're playing surfers, great to be tuned in. Yeah, exactly. Um, appreciate, do appreciate the Redland Rays tuning in. Any fans? I uh, I know there's a few of the fans watching this evening, so I appreciate that. Um, also, want to thank GBL for letting me do what I do. I must thank them immensely. So here we are, back top of the seventh. Atsuki Takahashi at the plate. Takahashi scored the second run for surfers on the Cosgrove single. And it's Reese Nitt on the mound now for the Redland Rays. So you have to figure they're going to ride out Reese Nitt the rest of this game. Nitt's job will be to keep it at three and give the Rays a chance to mount a comeback here. 
Takahashi took a fastball for strike one. He'll see a no one from Nit now. And big, slow breaking ball in there for strike two. So we've talked at length about Nit's contributions to this team, both with the bat and his arm. 16 innings, two runs, 16 strikeouts for a 1.13 ERA in the playoffs for Nit. And pitches a fastball. Takahashi dunks it in the right field for a base hit. So really good two-strike hitting there from the surfer's shortstop to get them started. And the hits keep coming. And it'll be Sam Foster, the veteran. And Max Durrington's stand-in tonight. Coming to the plate. Foster 0 for 2 tonight. Grounded out to third and grounded out to second. And he lays down a great bunt down the first baseline. Nit picks it up with his glove and makes a really great flip over to first to get Foster. That ball gets under Nit's glove and it is 100% a hit for the speedy center fielder from Surfers. But as it stands, a sacrifice to bring up Andy Cosgrove. Cosgrove responsible for two of the three runs tonight. Homered on the first pitch of the game out over the right field wall and hit a hard line drive single to right center to knock in Takahashi his third time up. This will be his fourth time. Two for three tonight. Let's see what Nick throws in here. And Cosgrove hard line drive down to third. One hop to Turner who looks back the runner and goes across to first for the second out. So Cosgrove looking to jump a pitch he liked and just didn't put the swing on it he would have wanted. Takahashi will stay put at second and yet again for the third inning in a row the Blue Wave will have a runner on second with two outs. The last two innings they were able to convert on a Cosgrove single and then last inning the Cronin single. And we'll see if Ricky Diebel can make it three from three. Nick comes set, Diebel 0 for three. And he takes a strike. Forgive me, that was a prior box score there. Diebel one for three tonight. 0-1 coming from Nick. And big curveball outside for ball one. Looks like Josh Warner for surfers is ready to go out in the bullpen there. And Summerford at this stage, 95 pitches. You wonder if his night is done. <laughs> we had Warner in on Sunday in the booth talking about how more, much more difficult it is to go through the lineup for the third time. And Erasmus got into trouble doing that as Cosgrove and Cronin with RBI singles as Diebel grounds one foul. Summerford about halfway through his third trip through the lineup at this point, as it stands. So Diebel behind in the count, one, two. It's his brother Jai Diebel on deck as Takahashi leads away from second. Top of the seventh here, three nothing surfers. One, two pitch, big curveball inside. And count to two and two now. Ricky all the way onto the chalk. Bit of a stare down out there to the mound. Two, two coming now, surfers dugout getting lively. Takahashi away from second, Gomez drops back. And big fastball from Reese Nitt. And Diebel swings through it up out of the zone for strike three. So Nitt escapes the seventh with no damage. We'll go to the Redlands half. Three nothing surfers.
So Dan Turner now to lead off the Redlands half of the seventh, nine outs away from a surfer's title here, and they are clinging to a 3-0 lead. It's still Summerford. Warner looks to be basically ready. And first pitch fastball, Turner swings right through it. Summerford, that was his 96th pitch. And he has been electrifying tonight. 0-1, fastball, strike two, and Turner, two swings and misses. And Summerford, who went right through Ashby with three fastballs last time now, looking to do the same to Turner. 0-2 coming. Fastball, swung on and missed. So one away now for Redlands, and it'll be Kai and Melander. Summerford amped up out there and just blowing doors. First pitch fastball in there for strike one. And fastball misses away. Count one and one now to Melander. Melander quietly had himself a good series. He's one for one tonight with a walk. And grounded towards second base, Wilford comes on, takes the easy hop, and throws on to first for the second out. So Melander is retired, and it'll be the nine hitter here, Crooks. And you have to wonder if, regardless of what happens here, if this is Summerford's last batter. Or whether, if Crooks were to reach, Kevin Fenn would have him see Duncan for a fourth time. First pitch to Crooks is fastball in there for strike one. Jerry Lakeo does a nice job to snap that up into the zone. Crooks one for two tonight, singled through the right side his last time up. 0-1 from Summerford. Fastball just off the corner, 92 miles an hour there from Summerford, who may sense that his night is coming to a close and wanting to leave it all out there on the diamond. 1-1, fastball, Crooks unable to hold up, as is confirmed at first base, another 90 mile an hour heater from Summerford. And John, you made this statement before, or maybe it was Dan, but if I'm a betting man, here comes the heat. Here comes the train. Either hit it or get off the tracks. Pitches, fastball, just off the corner, 91 miles an hour. Wow. It seems to be just blowing by batters, left, right, and center. 2-2 two, two coming. Stick with it. Fastball, Crooks punches it towards Diebel. Diebel makes the catch. And Surfer is now six outs away as Summerford walks off the mound after seven sparkling innings. And high fives from his teammates. The handshake from Kevin Fenn. And just a trim. If that was the last batter we saw from Summerford, what an outing for the young, the young Surfer star. We were saying his last outing was his best game ever. Uh, uh, I think he just blew it away again. So, top credit to Declan. That was a great outing. He's just going from strength to strength. So, just tremendous, tremendous outing. I agree. He did. He was more. You know, he had the dominance just a hair higher that last outing with those eight strikeouts in a row and striking out ten through six innings, but. Just the way he worked in and out of trouble tonight, combined with the stakes, combined with the unpredictability. This is a guy who was you know, planning to go on Tuesday night and would have prepared his body to go on Tuesday night and then thought he might have to go Wednesday night and then had to be ready for Thursday night. And just can't say enough what 
what a big deal him getting seven shutout innings is for this Surfers team. Yes, and it's not like the Rays haven't been in position to capitalise runners on second, third numerous times and getting out of a jam. So it's hasn't been uh, completely clean, but uh, as, as good as you could ask of your starting pitcher. So it's Jai Diebel versus Reese Nitt. Last time these two faced off as the first pitch is a big curveball and Diebel unable to hold up for strike one. Last time these two faced off, it ended with Diebel depositing a Reese Nitt fastball over the right field wall in game one. 0-1 oh, coming now to Jai Diebel, who is 0 for 3 tonight. As he swings and hits one fairly high, fairly deep into right field, Crooks back to the track and over his head, and it's gonna drop at the base of the wall. Big throw into second base, but Diebel slides under the tag with a double. Good lead off there by Jai Diebel getting the stand-up double. So almost a mirror image of Friday night where he took a first pitch breaking ball and then hammered a second pitch fastball. This one just a little bit shorter and left on the track. Crooks maybe had a chance there, but unable to make the play. And it'll be Harry White now looking to hit a ball to the right side to move Diebel across. Three nothing surfers here in the eighth. The pitch, fastball inside to Harry White for ball one. White one for three tonight, singled up the middle his last time. And he scored the third run off a single from Scott Cronin. one -oh coming. Fast, uh, change up rather, swung on and missed. Good enough change up to fool me up here in the box. So Nit being just a little bit careful with Harry White here. Talked a lot about his power. Nine home runs to lead the GBL. One one coming now from Nit. And big curveball drops in for strike two. So we one two now to Harry White, trying to move Diebel across the third. Big curveball, and that one stays upstairs. White lays off, and the count goes even. Nit a long look in there. We'll see if White calls time. He does not. Nit comes set. Two and two coming with Diebel away from second. No outs here in the eighth. Two two is swung on and missed by Harry White. So a good pitch sequence there from Nit, who throws him back to back breaking balls at 67 and follows it up with a fastball at 84. Typically, 84 isn't going to get past a guy like Harry White. But after you've seen 67 twice in a row, we talked about differential. And Declan's being between 74 and 90. Reese at 67 to 84, that's the same differential there. 16, 17 miles an hour. So equally difficult for a hitter. And it's Sherry Lakeo now one away. And it steps off. Lakeo one for three with a, an infield single. Which is a big curveball, stays downstairs. Jai Diebel always a threat on the bases. Not only is he fast, but a particularly smart base runner. He'll look for opportunities. If Nit were to not vary his timing, Jai Diebel would pick it up and would take third. Nit no amateur out there on the mound, however, and unlikely to be using the same timing every time. 1-0 coming to Lakeo. 
and pitches a fastball fouled off the ankle there. And Lakeo appears to be fine. Talked a lot about Jerry this weekend as well, how big of a, a deal he's been for this Surfers Club in the past and at present. Shout out to his family, the Lakeo family, if you're watching. He's raised a wonderful, wonderful young man and a, and a leader at this club and a tremendous ball player as well. And Diebel going for third. It's a curveball. Ashby's throw. And he goes past Herner and down the left field line. Diebel's going to score uncontested, and Surfers leads 4 0. And we just talked about it with Jai Diebel looking for opportunities and takes one there. Ashby throws one down the left field line in foul territory. Short hop Dan Turner there, who was unable to keep it in front. And Duncan wasn't anywhere near it at the time. Diebel scores easily. 4 0 Blue Wave. Two one now on Lakeo, and fastball dribbled down towards third. Turner takes on a short hop and throws across to get Lakeo. A difficult play that Dan Turner makes. So rather than charge it and catch it on the long hop, he stepped back a couple of steps, played it off the short hop, got caught in between, bounced off his chest, and grabbed it out of the air off the bounce to make the throw across and get Lakeo by about two steps. Scott Cronin now, RBI single his last time. So that goes as a stolen base for Diebel and then likely an E2 on Ashby as Cronin fouls it back, which allows the run to score. And that is indeed how they've scored it, E2 on the catcher. Cronin sees a fastball downstairs. Count goes to one and one. Cronin one for three with that single his last time. Cronin always a big power threat. One one from Nit. And breaking ball in there for strike two. So Cronin the last couple of years Played for surfers a couple of years before that, played for Mudraba. And the years over at Mudraba was hitting about 400 to 440, 8 to 10 homers a year. And a dual threat as well, can run the bases. As he has a big swing and a foul back on a fastball. Count still 1 and 2. Two outs here, Wes Wilford on deck. And Takahashi to follow if it were to reach. As we get to uh, 180 people tuning in, getting close to breaking a record. And big curveball from Nick Cronin fouls it back. Just able to get a piece there. And we'll do it again one, two. So we mentioned before the pitch limit, typically it's 180 for the series and Nick threw 109 on Friday. So had this game been played on Tuesday, he would have been looking at a 71 pitch maximum. Which at this stage, if, if the game had gone the same way, it doesn't look like it would have been a major factor as Nitt has only thrown 26 pitches to this point. And you have to figure here in the eighth, if he were to get to 71, surfers would have done some fairly significant damage. One two coming now to Cronin. And pitches a fastball, nubbed out towards second. Melander makes the play and on the first to end the inning. So Redlands Rays now six outs remaining. And the Blue Wave extend the lead to four. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth.
So it's Ryan Duncan here to lead off the bottom of the eighth for Redlands. Redlands six outs away, six outs remaining, and trying to do some damage on this 4 nothing lead that the Blue Wave have built. So to recap the scoring, we had an Andy Cosgrove first pitch home run in the top of the first inning over the right field wall. We had another hit from Andy Cosgrove, a single to right center to score run number two. As Duncan rolls one over towards first, Warner gets over to cover, and Diebel flips to Warner for the first out. So nice job by Josh Warner there. Good fundamentals for all you young kids watching. If you're a pitcher and there's a ground to the right side, it should be your instinct, second nature, to be running over towards first base. So it was Scott Cronin who knocked in the third run with a, sim a similar situation to Cosgrove, RBI single to right center, and then it was Jai Diebel creating the fourth run with a double and then stealing third and on the uh, underthrow into left field by Ashby scoring run number four. It's Josh Warner in here to relieve Summerford. And big slow curveball there for strike one. Warner had a fantastic postseason to this point, not including the out he just recorded. 13 innings, 9 hits, 3 earned runs, 18 strikeouts, only 6 walks, and a 208 ERA. Five outs now as Gomez takes a ball. Summerford's final line. just go through after this pitch from Warner. Yeah, 1-1 one, one to Gomez is a fastball just on the edge. Gomez not happy with the call. 1-2 now. Summerford, seven innings, five hits, no runs, no earned, one walk, and six strikeouts. 106 pitches and 72 strikes. Here we go, James. 1-2 now. And fastball chopped foul by Gomez. Erasmus' line, which we didn't have a chance to go through, six innings, six hits, three runs, three earned, one walk, eight strikeouts, 99 pitches, and 67 strikes. So both pitchers with an excellent uh, strike rate tonight. And one, two, big slow curveball from Warner, and Gomez sits down. Four outs away now for the Blue Wave to raise the trophy as Tyson Zamora steps to the plate with two outs in the eighth. So the Blue Wave have done an excellent job to keep Gomez quiet tonight. 0 for 4 with two strikeouts. Zamora 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. That's a big part of this Redlands order as Zamora takes strike one, and that has not allowed Matt Wyatt, who's two for three with a single and a double tonight, to do any sort of substantive damage, as he's only been able to just get himself on base, rather than knock in those in front. And Zamora swings and skies one. Right on the infield, Cosgrove settles underneath it, and makes the catch. Call your friends, 
Call your family, we're going to the ninth. The Blue Wave are three outs away from a GBL Division I title. Four nothing surfers. So young Wes Wilford coming to the plate in three outs away. Nid comes set and deals a fastball upstairs for Bowler. So Nid long look in, comes set again. 4-0 surfers here, top of the ninth. 1-0. Curveball down and away for ball two. Nit a little bit frustrated here, getting behind on Wilford. So it's Wilford, Takahashi, and Foster. 7-8-9 for the Blue Wave. Cosgrove, if anyone should reach. The Rays just hoping to keep it at four here. there from Nick in for a strike. Apologies to Nit and Warner if they are curious because we have lost the radar gun that does belong to Declan's father Rory. So thank you Rory for lending us that during Declan's outing. We'll see if we can Absolutely. get it back for the for the bottom half but no promises. 3-1 now on Wilford. Fastball, big swing from Wilford and fouled back. That one sticks in the screen and just misses one of the cameras down there. Not any of our cameras, fortunately. No, it's a uh, camera provided by Baseball Queensland and GBL, they have their own live stream going as well. So, dual live streams competing tonight. Full count now to the young Wilford from Knit. And fastball right by Wilford for strike three. So, a good at bat ends in a strikeout. And that'll bring Takahashi to the plate. Takahashi was the first batter that Knit faced and dunked a single into right his last time. One for two with a walk is the surfer shortstop. Started this season down in Division Two. Got the call up to Division One, serving as the third import when Jimmy Boyce was no longer available to surfers and spins away from a fastball. No, that one clipped him. Clipped him on the jersey. And Takahashi will reach with one out. Shout out Jimmy Boyce if you're watching. So Takahashi on base three times tonight, singled, walked, and hit by a pitch. So Foster 0 for 3 now, steps to the plate. As we've mentioned, filling in for Max Durrington. Max Durrington unable to be here on this Thursday night rescheduling of this finals. And first pitch taken for strike one by Foster. Takahashi a couple of steps off, looking like he was going to steal but changed his mind. And it's Cosgrove on deck, two for four with a homer and two RBIs tonight. Nid hoping for a double play, not staring at the right hitter to do so. Foster, one of the fastest on the squad. 
0-1 coming. And fastball just inside. Count goes even at 1-1. Foster coming off celebrating a Division II championship on Sunday in which he player coached, had an excellent game and season, and led the team uh, in combination with Mark Rawlings as Foster takes strike two, asking if that was the edge and getting his answer. Uh, Co-led the team with Mark Rawlings to an undefeated season. Outside of one draw, the team won every game they played, including a 10-0 championship on Sunday. Back-to-back -back titles for that Division II team. Takahashi away from first, one and two on Foster now. Knit deals and fastball on the outside edge. Just a bit of a late call from the umpire. Foster not happy. Politely signals his displeasure as he walks back to the dugout and that'll bring up Cosgrove. Outside of Summerford's electric performance, Cosgrove been the clear MVP of this team tonight. Setting the tone early with a first pitch home run to right field. Has been a leader for this team all year. First pitch is a breaking ball just downstairs for ball one. Redlands crowd not happy with that call. one -oh now on number 11, the surfer superstar third baseman. And fastball is swung on, is jammed, flied into shallow left, Gomez settles underneath it and makes the catch. So the Blue Wave go down without a run here in the ninth. And surfer's now three outs away from raising their first GBL championship in the last six years as we look at Ashby down at home plate. May have been hit by Cosgrove's backswing as he's holding his head in frustration. And he's walking off slowly there. The blue wave. Closing in on their seventh championship, having entered the GBL competition in 2002, 2003 summer season, winning titles in the 04, 06, 07, 09, 2012, and the last championship six years ago, right here in Windsor in 2018. Go to the bottom of the ninth, looking to raise the trophy again. For nothing here. Possible shutout win on the cards. So on replay, it does look like Cosgrove hit Ashby on the backswing there. You actually can see Cosgrove just turn and quickly apologize as he started running to first. Don't have a good view into the Redlands dugout. Team would be checking on Ashby, who would be due up this inning as it's gonna be Wyatt, Pike, and then Ashby's spot, four, five, and six for Redlands, as Josh Warner stays out there for the ninth. So Wyatt, the brightest star in this Redlands lineup tonight, two for three with a single and a double. Warner, who had an efficient first inning of work in the eighth, comes set and deals. First pitch is fastball ball one. Warner now 10 pitches and eight strikes, including that ball. 1-0 coming. And fastball in there for strike one. So it'll be a 1-1 now from Warner. 
and fastball upstairs. So wide ahead in the count, two and one. Fastball in there, strike two. So four straight fastballs there from Warner. And it'll be a 2-2 to the big Matt Wyatt, the big first baseman from Redlands. Pitches down and away. Count goes full. Redlands down to their final three outs. Redlands won the league this year, won the minor premiership. Surfers finished in a tie for third. Full count. Fastball grounded foul. And so Warner will do it again. Full count pitch, fastball lined into center field. Foster coming on and unable to get there. So he'll play it on a hop. And Wyatt's aboard with a leadoff single. So his third hit tonight. And we'll see what the Blue Wave do in terms of defense. Wyatt's run unimportant, given the four run lead. It looks like Diebel is holding on perhaps to keep the double play in order. And so now Warner will face Kyle Pike, the DH. And Pike takes a fastball outside for Bola. Just uh, thanking everyone for tuning in. We did break a record tonight. Getting close to 200 people tuning in. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Fastball upstairs from ball two from Warner, who seems to have lost the zone to some degree. After an extremely economical first inning of work. And so it'll be a 2-0 now to Pike. And pitch is in there for a strike. We see Byron Humble step into the on-deck circle for Redlands, which does imply that Ashby might be hurt. Two one now coming, and grounded foul. So two and two on Pike now as the ball kicks back into play. It'll be picked up by Takahashi. We saw Humble on Friday night playing first base when it would appear that Wyatt was unavailable given Wyatt's numbers this season. You wouldn't expect him to be benched for any reason in the final. And then haven't seen Humble since as Nit, who pitched on the Friday, played first on the Sunday. And pitches a breaking ball outside, three and two now to Pike. So we'll see what happens with Wyatt, whether they take off and take the chance on a strike him out, throw him out to prevent a ground ball double play. Big spot here, bottom of the ninth, four nothing Surfers. Surfers three outs away from a GBL Division I title. Pitches, swung on and missed. So Warner floats a breaking ball in there and Pike early on it swings through it and the Blue Wave are now Two outs away. And it looks like it'll be humble to pinch hit for Ashby. And you wonder now as well, if Redlands were to find some runs and tie this game, what they would do in terms of a catcher. Have to go to their emergency catcher at this point. First pitch to humble is upstairs from ball one. is just downstairs there, perhaps inside Warner asking. Count 2-0 now. now. Given the situation, Byron Humble at the plate, not the, not the fleetest of foot, and same with Matt Wyatt out there as we go 2-0 pitch, fastball away. And all the work that John Reimers has done to put this together, it's only fitting that he finishes the call here just in case a double play were to end it of the GBL Division I Championship. So John, I'm gonna flip it to you. 
Thanks, Owen. So, Brian Humble getting on for pitch walk there. So, runners on first and second, one out. As Kevy comes out to have a chat with Warren, obviously, on a short leash. Looks like he's going to give the ball to Andy Cosgrove to finish off. Not a slouch with the arm. Has good gas. He's played a good game. So I have a look at Cosgrove's numbers on the mound. Limited appearances usually comes in in situations like these, perhaps to finish off an inning, finish off a game. Cosgrove in the regular season, three and a third innings, five hits, one run, five strikeouts, one walk for a 2.7 ERA. Have not seen him in this postseason on the mound. And we know Cosgrove can light it up in terms of his fastball. Take this opportunity again, John, to say how much fun it's been to work with you this final series and every time we get a chance to work together. I'm glad we're able to put on a good show as it looks like the viewership's tipped over, ticked over 200. Yeah, I saw, it, I saw it tick over 200. That's pretty impressive. Hitting another PB. And I uh, just want to take an opportunity to thank all our awesome sponsors that are coming up on screen, Key Person Life Insurance, All About Cabinets, Riggs Recovery, Pest Arrest, Boss Adventures, The Car Place, RPM Finance, Southport Printing Company, The Wash Club, Seps Paradise Brewing, and Enzo Cucina Restaurants. Thank you all for supporting the club. And we hope you all join us again next year as valuable sponsors. So Andy Cosgrove on the mound to try and finish this game off. First pitch, just inside 88 mile an hour. Going one and one. Keep the talking to a minimum here. Let the atmosphere come through the microphones. Let you experience it at home. I do apologise if we get a bit rowdy up here. We are pretty excited. That one hitting 90. So, runs on first and second one out. Two. So two and two. Stay still and two. Fouls are back. Turn her over three tonight. Yeah. Two, two pitch. 
Strikes him out, swinging. The surface blue wave now just one out away from their seventh title. Melander one for two with a walk tonight, hitting in the eighth spot. Pitch, foul back. Grounded to third. Throw across to first. And that is it. The Surface Paradise Blue Wave are champions once again. The Blue Wave have taken on the best teams in all weather conditions and have beaten them all. And are GBL champions once again. Pandemonium here in Windsor. What a run for these guys, hey. Absolutely. What a run. I can only, like, having been part of this club since I moved to Australia four years ago, I can only give a little snippet of how it's been, but, you know, the first year I was here, ones was 12 and 22, something like that, bottom of the league, seventh out of 10, eight out of 10, had a 500 season after that, 16 and 16, something like that, and then, you know, the doors opened up to international imports last year and we had Kazi and AJ and Jerry come in and really turn the team around. We had O'Gorman come back, Scotty Cronin come back and yep. a great game against Karina where they sent us packing in the semi after a, after a top four finish. Yeah, then, bats went a little bit cold last, last time, but um, the bats were hot this season, putting them across the line and- um, Four year just, journey. It's only my second year of live streaming this team and for him to make the playoffs last year after such a, a long time away, uh, it's just a, incredible to be able to live stream and get the game out. So thank you everyone for tuning in. And um, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the new GBL Div 1 champions for 22-23, the Surface Paradise Blue Wave. Just uh, pause for a second, the uh, trophy ceremony coming up. Hope you can stick around, I'll, I'll keep live streaming. Try and get a good angle. So the Blue Wave stepping out, gathered on the field between the pitcher's mound and the third baseline. Looked like a couple of team photos were taken. Members of Baseball Queensland preparing for the trophy presentation. And what a trophy it is for those who haven't seen it before. We won the Div 2 trophy last year. It's about 30 centimeters tall. This Div 1 trophy is about five times that. Both teams now out. Yeah. 
ready for the ceremony here. Infield still littered with gloves from the throws and celebration. And it looks like ceremony just getting ready to get started here now. I believe we'll be able to give you the sound from the ceremony. And for those still watching, you can sit back and enjoy our champions being proud. There's not really proud. too much to say. Well, I'll let the uh, announcers take over and finish this ceremony. But yes, I want to thank everyone for tuning in and uh, sit back and watch this glorious moment. And uh, uh, before we before it just quickly gets, uh, I'll, I'll wait till the end. Hello, hello, hello. Everyone can hear me now? Excellent, thank you. Thank you. Bit of crowd, crowd participation. Firstly, I'd like to be a big round of applause to the Windsor um, Grounds crew for getting this up and running. For those who don't know me, my name's uh, David Hopkins. Everyone knows me as Hoppy. I'm uh, GBL chair for this season. Um, a big thank you to the GBL committee for all the hard work they put in this season. It's been a short one due to Easter being so close. A big shout out, especially to Shane Murphy. Most of you guys would uh, be in communication with him. He got this up and running as well with all the emails and communication that was going out. So a big shout out to, to Shane and the GBL committee. I'd like to welcome our special guest, guest tonight from Baseball Queensland. We've got Brad Parsons. <laughs> and we've got our Commissioner of Baseball, Mr Chris Norrie. They didn't want to do any speaking, so they just want to hand out, shake hands. Um, what a great series this has been. This has been, um, I reckon, one of the tightest in a long time. Um, both teams won all. Okay, and... Surfers came away with it for tonight, but just so such good quality baseball in all three games. So a big round of applause to both teams. I'd like to invite the uh, Redlands coach now up to say a few words. Uh, as has already been stated, a uh, massive thank you to the Windsor guys um, for getting the field playable. Obviously, Sunday was a tough day to get all the games on. Um, I don't think there was many clubs that would have been able to battle through that and make that happen. So, um, to surface, Kevy, congrats, fellas. Um, always a pleasure playing against you guys. I know you guys have battled through some adversity as of late, but for your Div 2 and Div 1 to do what you have done, um, good job. Always a pleasure playing against you guys. So my boys, we've been at it all year, we've battled through some injuries, uh, but always a pleasure taking a field with you guys, and we, we couldn't get it done, but um, yeah, I enjoyed every game we played. Uh, Ryan Duncan. Justin Erasmus. Oscar Hyde. Connor Melander. Beckham Crooks, Dan Turner, Tyson Zamora, Byron Humble, Anthony Gomez, Kyle Pike, Griffin Baker, Matt Wyatt, Isaac Smith, Kyle Ashby, and our bat boy, and Caleb Brandt. Thank you guys, thanks for coming out. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Reese. Um, now I'd like to invite the uh, Surface Paradise coach up for a few words. I'd just like to echo a few things. Thank you again to Windsor. I'm not sure if you're aware because it was on the other side of the mound on Friday night. They put a little um, tribute to one of our players and we really appreciate that. Thank you. A couple of guys who haven't necessarily got a shout out tonight are the two groups that put this on for people all around the world to watch this. Thank you to our streaming crews. Thank you very much. And to the real MVP, Johnny Remus. Nice job, buddy. Yeah. From our club standpoint, I'd really like to thank, like the whole GBL committee does a lot of work. You don't realize how difficult it is and it, they've done a really fantastic job this year. But from our standpoint, we've had a lot of um, correspondence, I suppose, with Secretary Shane Murphy. I think you've been first class all year, mate. Thank you very much. Tim Redmonds, every year. Love playing you guys every year. Just like Reese said, you compete, you make us think, you push us right to the edge. And I would play games like that every single time I came out to play baseball. No word of a lie every time. Thank you guys very much for everything you've done. <laughs> For my guys, I'm going to make this real quick. Nice job. Way to get there. Let's enjoy some beers. <laughs> Jai Deva. Josh Warner. Atsuki Takahashi. He might not have a job tomorrow. <laughs> Doug Breeze. Scott Cronin. Wes Wilford. Jack Smith with the last play of the game. Lockie Jones, without him we don't have a bullpen. Declan Summerford, without him we don't get to the eighth inning. Jake Scott, Matthew Hughes, Harry White, Jerry Lakaya, Matt Boyce, Andy Cosgrove, Ricky Diebel, Steve Chambers, Sam Foster, and our bat boy, Cody Harrison. A big thank you while I'm standing out here to the Surface Paradise crowd who made all the way up, up here to, to watch us. And to those, if they're hearing us on the screen back at Surface Paradise, to our committee, you guys do a fantastic job. Well done. Can't wait to do it all again. Thank you guys very much. Uh, thanks, Chris. Appreciate that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of every uh, final, the coaches get together and they decide who's been best on the diamond, obviously basing it on, on, on the whole, whole series. Um, tonight, they've chosen Andy Cosgrave. <laughs> yeah, we'll go to the big one. Yep, one more shout out. Sorry, and I, and I had to do this. A big thank you to Ann Phillips, who's actually not even from Surface Paradise, as she scored this whole series for us because we had we had some things happen in our club, and uh, we really appreciate Ann Phillips and all the scorers throughout the league. Thank you guys very much. All right, thank you, Kelly. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to 23-24 season champions, Surface Paradise.
So we see the Blue Wave raise the championship trophy and Andy Cosgrove deservedly the MVP of the series. I have to say, I thought Declan Summerford was the MVP tonight. What do you think, John? Uh, I think out of the entire series, because, yeah, the three-game series, Andy's bat work just, and at third base, he just had it locked down, those crucial outs from third to first. Deserve oh, yeah, a winner. No, no question about Andy being the MVP of the three of the three game series I agree just Declan was absolutely lights Ten, out tonight tonight, tonight absolutely tonight, yep and I think deserves all the flowers in the world for the performance he put on um, to anyone out best there watching the that's looking to recruit this kid I mean this is as big as a game as it gets for someone who's not yet a professional keyword yet and this kid showed up and dealt so an awesome finish to an awesome season for the Blue Wave. It's been a pleasure to be a part of it. Um, early in the season as a player, later in the season broadcasting with you, John, I appreciate everything you do to, to pull this all together and, and allowing me to be a part of it. So I will sign off at this point, say thank you, and, uh, and leave it to you to close it down. Yeah, thank you, Owen. I can't thank you enough for your excellent stat work and commentary. The entire club love it. I don't think there's a single person who wouldn't want you as a permanent staple on the uh, commentary team. So um, that's that's going to be it as Surfers Blue Wave uh, crown champions. Taking a few photos in front of the dugout. Just want to thank a few people before I sign off for the season. I want to thank Tony McPhail and the Surfers Paradise Committee and the hundreds of surfers and SPBC TV supporters watching at home and all the amazing channel subscribers that have all tuned in this season and uh, thank you to all our amazing club sponsors as well who I mentioned earlier and thank you to Just going through my list here. Thank you also, Matt Beebe, joining in tonight. Gives me uh, his points of view and his also a few little stats and uh, fun facts. And uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to need everybody to message my beautiful wife and thank her for letting me do this on our Friday night date nights and uh, throughout the season missing a quite a few months of family time and to do live streaming so yes make sure you all message my beautiful wife saying thank you if you have to thank someone thank her so for the last time this season my name is John Rymers it's been a pleasure live streaming this season I hope you've enjoyed it till next time you're watching SPBC TV. Good night.